tell you, the kids are probably going to have a fit when they see this empty. <laughs> AP snack machine, a Miss Pac-Man upright, behind that is a, a Asteroids Deluxe, and next to Mix Pac-Man there is some kind of a, maybe a kit game in a, what looks to be like a Robotron or Joust cabinet, and then, 95. A 95. Ours was a 94. Jim, did you notice it's a two-door? All right. Next, uh, next uh, Asteroids Deluxe. You can't see a lot of it, but it is a Missile Command. And next to that is a Frogger in an original Sega cabinet. And the first jukebox is a Wurlitzer 3000. And there are several of those. Here are two more Wurlitzers, and we're going to double check the uh, model number. Wurlitzer front grill. Here's another one that we'll shot of the grill so we can see what it is. And. Not exactly sure of the model, but somebody will be able to tell me. Then we have some mini Rockola. And if my memory serves me correctly, these are 454s. Several of those. They are all uh, complete and uh, in seemingly good shape. Here's another one here. Another one back to the right of that basket behind it a couple more and this one we've got partially uncovered is a 484 a little bit newer and then we have a Seaberg LS1 seems to be in nice shape and a Rockola in the corner and I'm hoping somebody can tell me what the model is because I can't get to it. I'm not exactly sure. Um, several more unknowns here. There are about four or five of the coffin model Rockolas. Here is a band shell that I've marked Seaberg number three. And I think it's the purple one. Um, another one. Another one behind it. And here is a L LPC-1, as you can tell by the grill. And there should be three or four of those. I just set it up there, Jim. And underneath here, that's another coffin. Should all be Rockola coffins. Two of them. And then there's actually where I'm standing. We can't get to them quite yet. But two more Rockola coffins. And then we've got another LS or LPC-1. Or no, LS, uh, yeah, LPC-1 under that far cover. And probably another one or two. And then we're just going to scan over the parts real quick. There is a bumper pool small coin op table and several speakers a lot of these were either used with the jukeboxes or the uh, background music systems which we'll get to in a minute and miscellaneous and sundry amplifiers however most of these machines are complete they're not uh, not gut robbed like we see a lot of them only because I'm standing here with the mechanic of 40 years. <laughs> Anyways, now we've got background systems. And as you can see, Seberg 1000. And these were apparently taking it, taken out of a place in working condition. A little bit of view. And these played, and we're not even exactly sure what RPM records, but they were the big, thick records for background. They must have been slow playing. 
see if we can't get the front view of one of these. Oh, maybe, or maybe not. A little more view of some parts. Well, all right. These are in really nice shape. As you can see, just, looks like the records are still in that one. Yeah, we've got some records in these. I, I'm almost leaning towards, and somebody can tell me, if these were 16 RPMs, and that's where they got the long play. But anyways, nice shape. Nice shape. Okay, background music systems. More parts here. And there are there are a few records, 45 RPM records, and that's about half of what's here. I'm going to scan these cigarette machines, although a lot of people are probably not too interested. These are mostly the 222 Nationals, however some of these round front ones, and there's only about maybe four to six of these, somebody may have interest in man cave type stuff a couple of them there once again we're not positive of the numbers but they are the older the round front ones probably built in the 60s uh, back in the corner there is a smoke shop probably an Apollo 850 now here is another Wurlitzer we cannot get to the back but we are thinking it might be a 2900 Um, here's a little more of what we can see, and I think this one might be one of the ones with the golden bar. Yeah, this has the golden bar. I'm trying to do this one-handed, guys, as you can see. And of course, the golden bar played the top seven records, I think, for 50 cents. And there's more stuff underneath, which we will unveil <laughs> at another time. Now, here are a couple of Wurlitzer 3000s, and these are what they're called the satellite. As you can see the name on the front here, the model was a satellite, and I believe the number, the four-digit number, was, uh, was a 3000. Now, once again... The very popular golden bar. And there's a couple of those, at least two or three. Two, I think. Two. And then mm -hmm. uh, we have wall boxes, a couple of them. I think so. Somewhere for those. And if we haven't got well, to them yet. These are the wall boxes. But there's wall boxes, I don't know where they're. Might be some booth boxes for those. Yeah. Now, one of my favorites of all times is a kid. This is a United, and I would imagine that the model name is Atlas. But it is by United. Not sure of the year. I'll look it up later, and maybe somebody can tell me. And uh, it appears to all be there. It's a shuffle puck bowler, as we call them. And, uh, the, the board is back there or something. It's, uh, it's taken apart at the moment, but... Uh, Appears to be a uh, cabinet-wise in nice shape, and it's probably a dime. Yeah, I think it was selling a dime. Anyways, that's uh, there's a ton more stuff that we have not been able to get to. Which after our first load out of here, we will uh, certainly know more. Um, the El Toro pinball does not go. In case anybody is interested and wants to write me, that's uh, that stays. But uh, pretty much everything else goes. So, all right, guys, Nevada Arcade. Thanks for tuning in.